I broke down. I felt desperate and lonely and like no one knew what I was going through. Hi everyone, my name is Sophie and I am one of your MedLife Mastery MCAT mentors. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about the ups and the downs of my MCAT studying journey. When I first started studying for the MCAT, I thought I would use all of the studying strategies that I had gained in university so far to study for this test. I should study the same way and I'll be fine. With that in mind, I decided to start right away on content review. I decided to purchase all of the Kaplan books, read them all in depth and make notes on them. I made really detailed notes in a notebook of all of the chapters in the Kaplan books. I thought I'll go back to these notes, study them over and over again, and I'll be fine. I decided after a month of doing only content review and pretty much no practice, that I would take a practice test. I did not feel confident at all when I was in the test. I felt like I had no idea how to apply the knowledge that I had gained throughout my whole month of studying to the passages and the questions at hand. I would see a word I didn't know. I would try and skip it and keep going. I would move on to the questions and just try and use my background knowledge to guess on them. That did not work out well for me. I decided to change my strategy and start doing more practice questions. I thought this is a great way to go. I'll just add a ton of practice into my studying, quantity, 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 until I reach that goal that I want to get to. So I purchased a UWorld subscription and I started to add a bunch of practice questions into my study days. I was basically only doing questions at this point. And I thought that this would be the best way to bridge the gap between my content and the test. In some ways I was right, but after doing three or four more practice tests, I completely plateaued. I couldn't get past there and I didn't know why. I thought I'm doing all the practice. I've learned all the content. What more can I do? After a particularly bad test, I remember feeling extremely discouraged. I broke down. I felt desperate and lonely and like no one knew what I was going through. I almost gave up. I remember talking to my dad and he said to me, Sophie, I know you're capable of doing this. There must be something you're missing about this test. There must be a different approach that you can take. And that's when I realized I actually hadn't taken the time to learn anything about the MCAT before this. I knew pretty much nothing about the strategy associated with this test, and I hadn't really cared to look into it. This is when I shifted gears. I decided to research and see what had other students done before me. What strategies and tips did they do to approach difficult passages and lots of math in the chemistry and physics section? I started to watch YouTube videos, including those from MedLife Mastery, to understand the experiences of students just like me. I also signed up for the MedLife Mastery emails, and I specifically remember one of the first emails I received had to do with your mindset on the MCAT. This is something I hadn't really thought about until then. At that point, I was so discouraged. I had a terrible outlook on the MCAT. I just wanted to get it over with. Upon reading the email from MedLife Mastery, I saw that maybe a change in mindset was just what I needed. I started to think more positively to have the feeling that I had control over the MCAT. It was my journey to conquer and my mountain to climb and I could do it. And this was great motivation for me to keep going. I also decided to incorporate practices that would support my mental and my physical health more. I would meditate, do yoga, go on walks, things to get my body going and keep my mind fresh. So that when I was studying, I was better focused. And when I wasn't studying, I could relax and actually get a good night's sleep. This combined with all of my new study habits was what I think helped me to increase my score. I also started to do more review. After I would do all my practice questions, I would take the time and actually go through all of them and see not only what mistakes did I make, but actually actively think of ways to fix those mistakes for next time. In doing so, I was doing better practice. It wasn't quantity anymore, it was quality of practice. And after a couple of weeks of following these study habits, I took another practice test and I saw steady increases up until my test day. I went into my test feeling confident, ready, and motivated to do the test. I had control over it. I ended up scoring a 520 on the MCAT, a 130 in Chem Phys, 131 in CARS, 130 in Bio Biochem, and 129 in Psych Soch. After reflecting on my studying journey, I realized how much I wish I had had someone to talk to over that time. Someone who could give me strategies from their real life experiences. That's when I decided to become an MCAT mentor. In this role, I've been able to help students out so that they can have a better studying journey. I also am someone that you can talk to just about your frustrations about the MCAT, things that I would understand. After doing this and working with other students, the major thing that I've realized is that there's not one approach to get the answer right. There's lots of different ways you can do this, depending on how you learn and how you want to approach this. As a last reminder, you are capable of meeting your goals. You have come this far, and I know that you have the ability to get to where you want to go. This little bump in the road of discouragement is only one step towards your MCAT journey. You've got this.